Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, Toby Smith. This is the next big thing. We have uh, a couple of guys who we've spent a fair amount of time with at uh, MBT Equities Research. Colin Tay uh, is one of the founders. He's the president of Chinatown Group. And George Alvarez on the right of your screen. Uh, give him a high sign, George, would you? Otherwise, you know, oh, there we go. All right. George is the president and founder uh, uh, as well, or excuse me, our chairman and CEO of Chinatown Group. Uh, those of you who've been with me for a number of years know that we have been a, uh, a big supporter of what Chinatel Group is doing. Uh, when we first started with them, they were working on a minority interest in a, uh, building a network for Chinacom, which is, which is one of the larger uh, carriers in China. It was a single sort of company strategy. Um, and boy, I'll tell you, uh, between 2010 and 2011, uh, Chinatel has now essentially gone to what we call as Chinatel 2.0, where they've gone from a single company to multiple companies, companies that are consolidating their revenues onto the, onto the income stream uh, or income sheet of Chinatel. Um, and they, there are so many exciting things they've done. Let's get right to it. For people who are not familiar with Chinatel, we started covering them in 2008. They survived 2009, and we started following them closely in 2009, 2010. Uh, they have uh, built a whole bunch of exciting things. So let's get to it. George, your, your goal in 2011, tell us about those goals and where we are right now on them. Well, um, let's go back a little bit to uh, uh, what you just discussed. In 2010, uh, we decided, uh, Colin and I and our board and our investors, that we needed to uh, attract assets where we could consolidate revenues and uh, increase uh, that consolidation with multiple sources. So in 2010, that was the, the goal to increase our uh, asset base from Chinacom. We accomplished that, uh, adding uh, Golden Bridge and uh, uh, Sino Crossings to, to the mix, the fiber and another operator in China. 2011, we roll right into uh, launching uh, the networks that have been under deployment for the last 18 months. Uh, in China and in Peru. Uh, we'll start seeing those uh, launches this summer uh, all the way through the end of the year. So that was uh, our, our primary goal for, for 2011. But also uh, to continue that, um, uh, that search for additional uh, relationships uh, around the world uh, for which uh, our goal now for 2011 is to increase our footprint from uh, uh, China, uh, South America, and also uh, Eastern Europe and, and Russia. All right, well, well, we'll get to those in a second because those are, I, I think, uh, you know, exciting parts. You know, Colin, you've been uh, sort of the lead guy in, in China um, uh, among, I don't know, these seven languages that you speak. I know you do a, a fairly, fairly good Mandarin. And, uh, but tell us about Chinacom because Chinacom is the first uh, uh, one out of the box here. They're going to be deploying now in um, Beijing and in Shanghai, a new uh, data network that starts basically June 1st, correct? Yes, exactly. They and have actually started. And, 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 and you're, because you guys have a minority interest, in other words, your, your, um, your interest is not a, 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 a controlling interest, so that's when we talk about consolidating assets, what we're saying is, is that when Chinatel, the parent company, con has a controlling interest in one of your operating companies, you get to recognize that income on your on your on your uh, income statement. Um, tell us with Chinacom. You guys now have announced that you're uh, uh, in, in negotiation. Tell me about that. Well, indeed, um, Chinacom is the uh, first deal that we have done in uh, Asia, or rather, for the company. And um, during the initial stage, uh, what we have negotiated was uh, according to the uh, uh, PRC laws. Right. Uh, foreign um, entities could only uh, invest up to 49 percent and because uh, because uh, we are minority shareholders and without the control of the board we are unable to consolidate our finances into our uh, main company in Chinatown Group so in that uh, regards uh, we are working towards um, um, discussing with our partners that uh, in certain ways, if we uh, were to control the operation, control the board, and that would allow us to uh, consolidate off all our financials in future um, deployment to our Chinatown group. Okay, well, that, and, and, and that would be, obviously, that's the goal that you have, and that, that's a negotiation. But, I mean, I, I, I do think that, uh, both for Chinacom and for Chinatel, uh, 
uh, creating an, an entity now, I guess because of the new, after the 2008 laws, you can actually, you've, you've done this structure with your Golden Bridge uh, uh, network with your Sina Crossing deal where you own 49%, but you control three out of the five board seats. That gives you effective control. That's the goal that you'd like to get to in Chinacom, correct? Exactly. In China, this is the goal we are, we are working on, and uh, we hope to have control of the board. All right. Well, we're going to go a little bit long on this segment because I want to talk about the other, the new network deals that you're, we're working on. George, we, we talked about uh, Russia, Central Europe. Um, they, uh, you have a variety of people who are sort of in that same situation where they owned uh, Spectrum that was uh, workable for a data network, but technology had not quite caught up. Um, and now you're at a point where you have uh, letters of intent, as I understand it, with numerous uh, uh, carrier partners in um, Central Europe. How would that work? And then you're changing the model, I understand. You're actually going to a 75%, 25% split. Correct. We feel that uh, the successful uh, launch of our model in South America and in China uh, validates uh, our concept, which is namely uh, maximizing the spectrum utilization, focus our capital resources to deployment, uh, using our vendor partners and their financing uh, capabilities to, to generate those revenues. So uh, we did that, and uh, we're currently in LOIs in uh, in nine countries in Eastern Europe and Russia that uh, I hope to conclude, Colin and I hope to conclude uh, over the next 30 days, uh, part of a plan. Because our, our model is, is quite simple with regard to uh, very cost-effective deployment dollars and uh, an entry point in the market of eight to twelve dollar subscriber mm -hmm. uh, ARPUs that uh, we feel uh, could gain us uh, substantial shares of uh, those markets. Well, there's no question. We're, we, we're going we're gonna to come back and talk uh, more about your new stuff as well as, a, as the model. But clearly, the new model here for Chinatel is, is that you come in with a, a, someone, a partner who has Spectrum. You provide all the financing. Uh, you deploy it. You put the capital up, make it happen. And your point is now, because you're doing that and you're, at, you're not doing that in a, in a China where you're limited to 49%, you're looking at 75% shares. They're consolidating. And you're going to be the low-cost carrier. So when we come back, I want to talk about how you guys are able to build these networks so cheap, how ZTE, your partner, fits into that uh, strategy. And then we're going to talk about uh, uh, the actual product because you guys are going to be selling one hell of a product, it sounds to me, uh, at, at, at 10 times the speed for 200% less cost. Now, that's something I want to do. That's the next big thing. We'll be right back with Chinatel, Colin Tay, and George Alvarez after this.